Hi, welcome to Delta Dental of Arizona. My name is Jessica Arnold and I'm the social media and content specialist with Delta Dental of Arizona. The past eight weeks or so, we've partnered with a local registered dental hygienist Hi. to, offer, <laughs> to offer some great oral health tips for people while they're kind of social distancing and staying at home and maybe not able to get to the dentist as regularly as they would have liked to. Um, we uh, have come to the end of our eight weeks now and today we thought we'd talk a little bit about what it's like to become a dental hygienist and what a career in dental hygiene entails. So this is Brittany Tibbetts. <laughs> She's, a, as we said, a local dental hygienist here and we've brought her along to kind of um, go on this journey with us through oral health and today we'd love to speak with her about her career in dental hygiene. So thank you Brittany for all of the work you've done in creating all of these videos for the past eight weeks. Yeah, it's been fun. It's definitely um, not something I've done before so it's kind of yeah. fun to get out of my comfort zone a little bit. <laughs> cool, cool. Well we kind of want to jump into it and see if you could tell us a little bit about how you got into dental hygiene and kind of what your um, passion was to start with? Were you always interested in health or helping others? Kind of yeah. what led you down this career path? Well, I think I was one of those like weird kids that loved to go to the dentist. I loved, <laughs> I loved going. I looked forward to my cleanings and my six month appointments when I was a kid. And I always thought it'd be a really fun career. I thought, oh, this is, this seems like something mm -hmm. I might like to do when I'm older. And then I um, kind of didn't really think about it again and I, I went to school for other things and started working in another career field and uh, um, I wasn't really happy with what I was doing and I always my mind just kind of always kept going back to I think I kind of want to do that someday maybe and so um, anyway I kind of had a big move a big um, change in my life and I thought this seems like a really good time I want to I want to do that so went back to school and um, picked up an associates in dental hygiene. Actually, that's all you need to practice hygiene. You can either have an associates or continue on for a bachelor's or higher. But I picked up an associates in hygiene. Um, I love helping people and I thought, this seems like a really cool fit. Mm -hmm. I thought for a while um, that maybe I wanted to go into nursing, mm -hmm. but um, just kind of decided against it. And mm -hmm. I'm actually really glad I did because I really love my job. and. The field that I'm in so yeah yeah and you're still helping people yeah you're day. still helping mm -hmm. people and I don't know just is a good fit for me yeah <laughs> you talked a little bit about picking up your associate's degree can you tell us maybe or for our audience what um, what it entails to actually become a dental hygienist what kind of schooling do you need or credentialing do you need yeah so you can practice hygiene correct I might be wrong when I say this but I think it's in all 50 states that you can practice hygiene with with an associate's degree um, so it's a lot of, um, obviously like science heavy courses. Mm -hmm. So you, you really have to kind of have an interest in that, mm -hmm. um, type of thing <clears throat> probably before you get into this field. But yeah, you can practice, um, with just an associate's degree. Um, associates allows you to do clinical work, work in public health, um, maybe, maybe some sales positions, things like that. But uh, if you want to do anything like teaching or um, instructing, things mm -hmm. like that, most colleges require at least a bachelor's, if not a master's. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really it's a really great field for somebody who's like, I know what I want to do. I, I just want to work clinical for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I really love like the nitty gritty and stuff like that. You can um, go to school and get your associates. A lot of schools even have like accelerated programs. So. I went to a um, technical college, mm -hmm. and so I think our program was maybe slightly less than two years because mm -hmm. it's on more of a fast pace. You just don't have like summer breaks and um, scheduled breaks like that, mm -hmm. so you just kind of go straight through. And so, um, anyway, yeah, it's not for the faint of heart though because. Like I said, there's a lot of science courses. It's a very technical kind of thing. So you really have to put in a lot of effort mm -hmm. while you're in school. 
when to study hard, make sure you know your stuff before you actually are safe to start treating patients. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. but definitely a career where you can take it in many different directions. Oh yeah. Work there, in public health or teach or work in, in you know private practice, yeah. a lot of different. Exactly, so I, avenues. and that's what I do. I work in, I do clinical, so I work in private practice a couple days a week. And then probably if you guys have caught my other videos or our other mm -hmm. videos, um, I've mentioned that I also work in public health too. So lots of different avenues. There's sales positions that you can get. There's teaching, there's faculty at colleges, all kinds of different avenues that you can right. pursue with this field. So you're not pigeonholed into just doing clinical work or anything right. like that. So it's pretty cool. Could you tell us a little bit about what your day today looks like when you're at work? Yeah, so a normal day, um, I usually try to get there a few minutes early drink my coffee, <laughs> settle in, yeah, settle in, go through patient charts, um, review medical histories before I bring the patients back, just because I like to kind of go through all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, oh yeah, I remember this person has this condition or this person has this or whatever. I like to refresh my memory on that stuff. Um, but go through all their charts. <clears throat> um, when we take the patients back, um, to, Depending on the office, I'm lucky enough to work in an office where I get an hour per patient. Right. So it really allows me the time to um, go over in-depth health history questions, mm -hmm. blood pressure checks, um, intraoral and extraoral exams. So we feel different structures on the face, neck, inside the mouth, obviously. Um, and then the cleaning portion, that's mm -hmm. obviously what, what people right. come in for. Um, we can check the health of their gum tissue, check for signs of oral cancers, diseases, things like that. Um, so yeah, and we do that for each patient. So <clears throat> after I'm finished with a patient, it, cleaning, x-rays, all that good stuff that goes with it, um, we disinfect and wipe down every surface, everything that gets touched in the operatory, mm -hmm. um, and then bring the next one back. <laughs> start it all over <laughs> yeah, again. Start it all over again. Cool. Um, there's always something to do, so whether it's um, helping get caught up in sterilization, you know, doing your instruments mm -hmm. or sharpening instruments, just maintaining them, um, all kinds of things, or checking supplies to make sure you're good on that stuff. Like there's right. always something to do and it's not, there's hardly ever any downtime, which is nice. I, I like working in that kind of environment. I don't like to just sit around mm -hmm. and have not much to do. Yeah. So never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Yeah. That's true. Cool. <laughs> um, while you're at work, what seems to bring the biggest smile to your face? What gives you the most joy while you're actually I, with patients and at work? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's just like building relationships with patients. Like they start to become family over a while. You see them every six months routinely. Every mm -hmm. six months you get to know them and their families and you can remember to ask them like, hey, how was your trip to Disneyland last yeah. summer and stuff. So it's, it's really fun to hear and, and when they, um, have trust in you mm -hmm. and they want to come back and see you again and just kind of building that relationship and rapport. Yeah. I feel like that's really rewarding and satisfying. Sure. Mm -hmm. Another reason to go to the dentist every six months, right. get to know your dental yeah. hygienist. Yeah, you can make friends with us. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, since you've started, how have you seen maybe the industry evolve or things change or what do you see coming down the pipeline in the future for dental hygiene? Um, well, I think right now, just because of this whole COVID situation, I feel like we might start to see um, some stricter requirements on PPE mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, already it's recommended that we wear certain masks and right. face shields and bonnets on your hair and, and um, disposable gowns and stuff like mm -hmm. that to change in between patients. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how our standards of care change mm -hmm. because of this whole pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And if, um, yeah, I think it'll be, it'll def it's definitely rocked our world for sure. Mm -hmm. Like it's, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Knowing even that dentists and dental practices have always been very cautious about patient care oh, and yeah. mm -hmm. creating a, you know, a, a sterile environment yeah. and a clean environment that's always right. obviously been yeah. on the forefront, but these yeah. are even additional changes that are Well, yeah, because we've, I mean, we've always been protected ourselves and our patients against bloodborne pathogens, but this is something, this airborne pathogen mm -hmm. virus is just something new for us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I think until we really like figure out what is best for us and for the patients, it'll be interesting to see yeah. how things change. A changing environment. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, 
do you have any funny stories you can share from maybe your time with patients or your time as a student yourself? Anything funny that's kind of happened to you along the way while you've kind uh, of developed this career? Well, I've had some really embarrassing moments that are maybe funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I first graduated hygiene school, um, I didn't have a permanent home that I was working at. So I was doing a lot of temp work, which is, by the way, a really great, another avenue mm -hmm. that you can do as a hygienist. Mm -hmm. It's a really great way to like figure out what kind of environment you want to work mm -hmm. in, if it's general or peds, pediatrics, or, you know, just kind of get your feet wet in all these different types of um, offices. But so I was temping at a new office and I had never been there before. And every time you go into a different office, your operatory is set up different. So one might have what we call like rear delivery where your instruments and stuff are behind you mm -hmm. or one might have front. So it's always kind of um, tricky just like navigating your way around. Mm -hmm. And I, this was my first time at this office. I might have been my first time temping. I don't remember, it was very early on. But I was taking digital x-rays on a patient and when we put the sensor in their mouth, there's usually a long cord that connects <laughs> to the computer. And so I was, the patient happened to be like a gag He had a really bad gag reflex. So I was trying to hurry to yeah. like take speed the sensor, yeah, speed it up to like take the x-rays real quick so that he didn't have to hold on that big sensor for a while. And so I was kind of rushing and I turned around real quick and I started to run out the room and I tripped over the um, x-ray cord. <laughs> and so I started to go down. And as I'm going down, I, I like kind of softly landed on the chair that we sit in when we're cleaning patient's teeth. But it has wheels, so it started to roll away. So I'm like, whoa, like falling over. I like probably wound up on my back with cords all around me and tangled up. And oh no! Anyway, that was really embarrassing. <laughs> Great way to start your your first day as a tan. Yeah, right. A good story. They now, probably though. never had me back yeah. again that often. <laughs> A lot of comedic relief for everyone right. in, the, in the waiting yeah. room that day. Oh, and also just this happened the other day. I was taking, again, x-rays mm -hmm. on a patient. <laughs> We've got all this extra PPE, so I've got my big lab jacket on and mat, everything. And um, again, I was trying to hurry through it because mm -hmm. we had tons of patients coming in because right, their right. appointments all got postponed or, um, you know, pushed back mm -hmm. or whatever while we were closed. And I turned around real quick and I slapped this kid straight across oh, no. the face. Oh, no. And he, I, look, I just looked at him and he like, sorry, looked back at me. I was, I was mortified. Yeah. I felt so bad the whole time. I'm like, I'm really sorry for hitting you across the Merely face. Merely an accident. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Incidental. Oh, anyway, no. that was also yeah. really embarrassing. But Good. maybe. Maybe yeah. we'll laugh about it at a yeah. next good, visit. Good I don't stories know. stories from your career, that's yeah. for sure. Um, speaking of career, do you have any tips for people who might like to go into this career? Maybe who mm -hmm. are thinking of making a career change or like science, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. What are some good tips for someone who is um, well interested? I would not recommend this field to anybody who's very squeamish because we see <laughs> yes. a lot of really interesting things coming out of yes. the mouth. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's a really great field for people, like you said, who really like science and who are interested in health in general. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I love the career, especially because there's a lot of flexibility with it. So either in um, types of settings that you mm -hmm. can work in, but also just um, my schedule. I have a 16 month old son at home and it's really nice to be able to work uh, maybe part time mm -hmm. and still have the, you know, mm -hmm financial means to to be able to be home with him a couple days a week and stuff That's nice. um yeah it is a really nice it's a really nice flexible career to have cool yeah cool so i would i would encourage those who are interested maybe to go and shadow at an office maybe ask your dentist if they idea. wouldn't mind letting you just kind of hang around the office for a day or two mm -hmm. just to see if it's something that you think you might be interested in there's also other positions that you can work at mm -hmm. as at a dental office maybe front desk so help with checking in and insurance verification mm -hmm. and all that stuff or maybe even dental assisting too there's a lot of hygienists that start off as um, dental assistants it's a good way to kind of get your feet wet yeah and see if it really is the type of environment that you want to work in and if it's just something that you're passionate about mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um hone in on your interests a little bit yeah mm -hmm. yeah i would say cool mm -hmm. cool mm -hmm. well thank you mm -hmm. so much for joining us and for sitting through these eight video series yeah. with us <laughs> um it's been really fun and we've got so many great tips now for people working from home for seniors and older adults for 
parents, tips for kids. We've even got some um, cavities and craft, or I'm sorry, cavity crafts that you can try with your little ones while you're at home. Lots of different great oral health information throughout these videos. So you can actually check out all of them either on our Facebook page or on our Delta Dental of Arizona YouTube page. Um, tons of great resources there. Um, and so the other thing I wanted to mention is if anybody has any questions, feel free to pop them in the um, comments and we'll do our very best to get back with each and every one of you. Questions about Brittany's career, questions about oral health, even possibly questions about dental, dental benefits that we can direct you to the, to the right answer. So feel free to reach out. Um, and the other, the last source I wanna tell you about is our blog. Our Delta Dental of Arizona blog has oodles of resources, again, on oral health, recipes, and tons of information about your dental benefits and using your dental benefits. So that um, web address is Delta Dental, um, deltadentalazblog.com. So check out all of our information there and um, let us know if you have any questions. And thank you so much for sticking with us through these eight videos and, and watching them with us. So yeah. happy brushing and thank you, Brittany. Yeah, thank you for having me. Like I said, it was really kind of fun to do something different cool. and share some of the information that I know and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if, like Jessica said, if anybody has any questions or anything for me or whatever, just let us know. We'll get back to you. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thanks. Bye. Bye.